Hey everybody and welcome to my final thoughts and review about The Crimson Scales, the fan-made expansion to Gloomhaven. Very impressive project. You can go over to thecrimsonscales.com if you'd like to find out some more information about this. Uh, there was a print and play version available, still is. There's a tabletop simulator mod available of this, as well as there was a physical printed version, which I was lucky enough to sign up for and get my hands on. So here it is. Here is my final thoughts. Before we get started, a big thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon and those who sub over on Twitch. I really appreciate it. With the Patreon people coming up on screen now, a big thank you as well to my legendary supporters, Mike, Kira, and Truck Driving Gamer. Thank you guys so, so much. If you would like to support me and the channel, then the information is down below. I wanted to do a review since I have now completed my main kind of campaign playthrough live over on Twitch. So I've played through the entire story campaign. I didn't do all of the side missions. I was very much trying to just focus on getting the main campaign done just so that I could do that before Frosthaven turns up. And funnily enough, the day after I did that on Twitch, I actually ended up getting the shipping notification for Frosthaven and my Frosthaven has now arrived. So that really kind of uh, has now come to the forefront. So it kind of all happened in a nice way, but I haven't completed everything in this game. So, you know, take what I'm going to say maybe with a bit of pinch of salt because I haven't done everything, but I think I've got a very good general kind of sense of what was included in the box and everything as a whole. I also want to kind of split this kind of review into a few different parts. So the first part, we're just going to talk sort of generally about the project, I think, and about who it's for and, and, and if you're interested in this kind of thing or not. Then we'll probably go into some more of the kind of spoiler stuff, which I will kind of tag as spoiler if you are kind of interested in my thoughts on the story and things like that. And then ultimately, we'll kind of come full circle at the end and, and I'll let you know kind of in total what I think. Well, first, I think it's really important to mention how impressive this even is that it exists in the first place. Board Game 613, who was the one who put it all together, Marty, who uh, now runs Addex Games. This was his kind of project that really got him into creating board game content. And uh, I mean, he's done an, an incredible job to kind of be able to piece things together from lots of different places. I mean, a lot of what is here is from himself. But there is still bits from other people, collaborators who have come on board, people who have play tested it to a good level, people who have helped with the artwork, helped with the design, helped with the logistics. You know, everything that went into just making this is pretty damn impressive, to be honest. I mean, I can't think of any fan made project I've ever been made aware of that has kind of gotten to this level. So, you know, I think we all need to just take our hats off to him for, for putting this together because, I mean, otherwise it just wouldn't exist. And uh, there's always been a lot of custom content for Gloomhaven, but it's always been kind of lurking or, or, you know, in in subreddits or in different communities where, you know, if you're not involved in those communities or you're not aware of them, you, you know, a lot of great stuff would pass you by. And he managed to kind of get things together and kind of create something that really drew attention to that and shone some light on, uh, you know, himself, but also other people who have been making really fantastic content for, for Gloomhaven custom stuff. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, again, hats off to him. Really impressive achievement there. And, you know, that really comes to like, you know, the gameplay and, and what the Crimson Scales is. Well, I mean, it is just more Gloomhaven. There isn't really anything here. There's a few minor changes to like the way that the kind of campaign type structure works inside the Crimson Scales. There's also some changes to things um, like the temple is a little bit different. You know, item acquisition and timings and things like that are a bit different. And of course, all the scenarios are different and the story that you go through is, is different and unique to this. But it is very much more Gloomhaven. This, to me, feels like, uh, you know, if... If Gloomhaven was sort of like 1.0 and Frosthaven is 2.0, this feels like 1.5, right? It feels like it's kind of in that middle area where you can definitely feel that the, the kind of the sensibilities of the character design and also the learnings from different scenarios and the pacing and, and what's difficult, what's not difficult, all of this kind of like, you know, play testing that's now been done on Gloomhaven in general because it's become such a wildly successful game, that has definitely been taken into account here to try and uh, kind of make things really entertaining and really dial things up, especially if you're an experienced player and you really like to get to grips with characters that have more difficult mechanics, more kind of elaborate mechanics, uh, and uh, maybe even like different builds and things like that. Like there's so much flexibility with the characters here and the things that you can do. You know, no character here. I mean, there are some that are more simple than others, but you know, all of the characters feel very well polished. 
all of the characters feel uh, really well kind of um, thought out and unique to what it is that they're doing. You know, there are obviously similarities between a few, but ultimately they've done a, a great job of making pretty much all of the characters feel quite unique. Now, I only managed to play four characters in total through my playthrough. So I played um, the Chieftain, I played the Luminary, I played the Ruinmore, and I played the Spirit Call. And all four of those characters I really enjoyed playing, and all of them were, were very unique. You know, there were stumbling blocks at times with certain characters, um, but not outside of what I wouldn't expect to have playing two-player. You play two-player in Gloomhaven, sometimes you come across some sort of anti-synergies with your characters or particular scenarios aren't well suited to your team, and that's just because, well, you've only got two mercenaries where maybe if you had four, you'd be able to fill in those gaps. But uh, ultimately, that, that you know, it never became too much of an issue. And I really want to move on to scenario design because scenario design, I think, in Crimson Scales is excellent. It really is like there's some fantastic scenarios in this. Some that were, you know, more fun than, than some of the ones that I've played in, in base Gloomhaven. And again, it's because they can dial it up to, to 11 here. You know, you don't have to worry about barrier to entry in terms of players not having the ability or not having the knowledge or understanding. This is geared towards advanced players. And uh, the scenarios, you know, you know, they don't pull any punches. Some of them can be pretty mean. And and they've got really interesting boss fights in some of them, really interesting just scenario mechanics in different ones. So I, I really enjoyed the the general scenario design. There was a, maybe one or two scenarios that felt like maybe just a little bit of a slog, like maybe they were a little bit too long. But, you know, most of them had something else going on. There, were, there weren't too many that were just kill all monsters and, and that's it. You know, there was a very good mix of different types of scenarios. And to be honest, I only did about a third of the scenarios are actually in the box through my playthrough so there's so much more there to be able to to experience so that was a real highlight for me too uh on to the kind of like middling points of crimson scales and to, it's not really a knock for this because it's a knock against gloomhaven as well the story here is just fine for me it's nothing crazy i personally don't play gloomhaven uh, i never played gloomhaven for the story um frosthaven might change my mind on that i don't know but, you know, all, this is a, a nice story. Um, it, it goes through and some people will find it interesting, I'm sure. But for me, I found the story to just be just fine. It was a backdrop and gave me a reason to go on these scenarios and to do these things. It, it didn't really uh, grab me and, and really kind of like there wasn't any, um, you know, like loads and loads of twists and turns and things like that. I don't want to make too many spoilers about the, the story here. But yeah, it, it to me, it, it just didn't really... Um, it, it didn't grab me, but neither did the Gloomhaven story grab me, really. So, again, you know, it's uh, the fact that they've managed to kind of, you know, get up to a, a reasonable level there, which, you know, that, that could have been an area where the game really fell down quite hard because, you know, the scenario design is something that obviously a lot of players enjoy doing. Making the characters is something that a lot of people like doing. But to actually create, like, a cohesive narrative that goes all the way through, that was, like, extra stuff that had to be on top, done on top. And uh, yeah, although I don't think that like, it was a massively compelling story, there is a story here and there's a thread that goes all the way through and it's fairly interesting and, and it's there and it serves a point. So, you know, that's that's to be commended that there is even a kind of plot here and it's not just a uh, you know bunch of scenarios, fan-made scenarios jumbled up and chucked in a box. It, it really isn't. There is definitely a narrative here. So yeah, that, that's kind of like my, my general kind of thoughts on, on the overview of different things. So if we want to talk a little bit more kind of spoilery now, so if you are worried about spoilers, I'm going to talk briefly now a little bit about like the story spoilers and uh, and then we'll kind of go from there. So hopefully, there you go, that's enough warning. So if you're worried about that, hopefully you're gone. Well, so the story, uh, at the end, I wasn't really particularly happy with the resolution of it. I found like the resolution at the end, was it was like a very quick kind of wrap up of the story to me again granted i i didn't necessarily i did necessarily do all of the the kind of other missions around i did make a beeline for that knowing that i was on borrowed time until frosthaven came really for when my crimson scales arrived but it it didn't really like grab me it, uh, there was a choice that we had to make i think it was the scenario before the last scenario and there was like a choice that we had to make and that felt great like that was the first time that the game had presented me that uh, where I had we had this opportunity to either do something or not do something 
uh, or do two different things. And I think it was like there was a potion and we could either give it to, to the character or we could destroy it. And, you know, we had, it was, you know, there was pros and cons for doing it e either way. And that then knocked on to the final scenario. But I found like it didn't really make much sense how it ended up working in the final scenario. We ended up, we decided to not give them the potion to destroy it. And of course, they were not very happy about that. And that just meant that we ended up playing an extra room in the final fight. Um, and that really didn't feel very impactful at all because even after we had done that, we we got a bonus of getting back a, a lost card um, as like a, oh yeah, but you get a lost card back. So it felt like we really didn't even like play. You know, it felt very, it, it didn't feel like uh, it was really worth it. It wasn't very, like, that decision really didn't seem to matter at all. And also it didn't really like thematically to me very make much sense because the character... Uh, essentially was you know uh, it was either we give them the potion which i would presume would make them stronger or we could destroy the potion we opted to destroy it but that meant we had to fight an extra room of enemies um and if you had given her the potion then actually you would have skipped that and just gone straight to the second room and there was no nothing else to it and that to me was like i don't really thematically understand what was going on there so it's like you know th these are like minute kind of points really when um you know we uh, kind of talking about this story because like I said just the fact that the story exists but yeah it was things like that but I really liked how when we got the orbs we got like the uh the frozen orb and we got the the orb of flames we got those two different kind of artifacts I really liked the way that they were used inside the scenarios and that we were getting buffs like one character was carrying it and they had to go and do something but they would get a buff if they would attack an enemy with it you know that was a, a really cool way to so kind of use items inside and like uh kind of plot items inside the scenario itself that kind of gave us some bonuses so uh, I, I yeah i just felt like the resolution you know we went on these kind of like random tasks you know we were kind of being sent out as a mercenary on these different tasks and we were doing these things and you know coming back and giving it back to the crimson scales guild leader you know we were giving them back and giving them back and then at the end she was just like ah surprise i was getting you to do all this just to help me and now I'm going to kill you and take revenge because I'm Jack Sarah's sister. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and I was kind of a bit like, oh, okay. I, I could tell that she was evil, I think. Like, you know, you could kind of get that sense as the plot progressed that she was maybe not a very nice character and that her intentions weren't good. But it, yeah, it kind of like went from 0 to 60 very, very fast at the end. And, say, and that decision that we had to do didn't really feel like it, it made any difference at all. Or at least to me as like an, an experienced player, it didn't. So yeah that's kind of like my my thought of the story so now we'll we'll, we'll cut sort of here and we'll, we'll we'll bring people back in so uh we'll go non-spoiler now so spoiler spoilers are are over about the story so let's so let's like in conclusion let's talk about who kind of crimson scales is for and should you should you play crimson scales well i think if you're playing through frost haven right now if you've received frost haven and you're playing through it now with your your group you know, then this is maybe, this would be kind of like a sideways kind of progression or maybe a slight regression in terms of uh, gameplay mechanics. Of course, Frosthaven has the outpost phase, has lots of extra stuff going in there. Um, you know, the way that you unlock characters is a little bit different and stuff like that can happen. So there's a lot more going on and you've got the crafting table and stuff in Frosthaven than there is in the Crimson Scales. Crimson Scales very much uses Gloomhaven mechanics and then builds a little bit on top of them. So there's not a huge amount of extra stuff that you can really, um, you know, sink your teeth into that's really going to wow you every single time. If you haven't played Frosthaven or you haven't played um, that at all and you, you, you don't think you're going to be playing that anytime soon, should you maybe look at Crimson Scales? Well, if you completed Gloomhaven, I think so. I think it's, it's a good option. If you can play it on Tabletop Simulator, of course, just getting hold of this is going to be difficult. So... I think you can play it all on Tabletop Simulator. Uh, you can also do a print and play if you want. I think probably Tabletop Simulator will probably end up being the, the best route for most people. So play it on there if you, if you are really keen. If you are a remote player, of course, then this might be the only option. You might not be able to play Frosthaven because there isn't actually a Tabletop Simulator mod that's got the full Frosthaven experience out yet. So if you are you know, got a Tabletop Simulator group, then this could be a perfect way to keep that Gloomhaven kind of thing going until maybe you can start playing Frosthaven, hopefully in the future. 
So I feel like uh, if you are someone who has played Gloomhaven, then the Crimson Scales is a really good next step, especially if you've got Tabletop Simulator. If you've managed to get yourself one of the printed copies, and of course you already know that you that you probably like it, and you probably know that, that you're going to play it, it is a, a very impressive project, end to end, really. Uh, and if you're somebody who is coming from, to Gloomhaven completely new, you haven't played Gloomhaven Digital, you haven't played Gloomhaven Tabletop, you haven't played Tabletop Simulator, haven't played Frosthaven, haven't played Jewels of the Lion or anything like that, I would probably not start with Crimson Scales. Just because there's a bit of shortcutting here and there in terms of like, what does this do? What does this mean? You know, the, the rule book is not perfect. Uh, the scenario book is not perfect, but it is very good. I mean, there's a few typos here or there, but to be honest, no more than I see in some other... Uh, you know, actually published official board games that are released. So, you know, I don't think it's too bad, but there is definitely a, a level of like understanding that is sort of implied and expected here when you, you come to play. And of course, if you were going to play the physical version, you need to have the components from base Gloomhaven anyway. But if you were to go on Tabletop Simulator, then obviously that would all be there. So I think that you would probably want to stay away from it. What I'll probably end up doing is to say I'm going to be moving on to Frosthaven now on my channel. So th that is going to take precedent now. I'm going to begin my playthrough on Twitch soon, probably within the next week or so. And then we'll be making content on the channel about Frosthaven. But what I'll probably end up doing is I'll probably end up sort of like sort of pushing Crimson Scales to the side for a little bit. And uh, probably I will bring it back out again after Frosthaven or maybe before I finish Frosthaven. I'm not sure probably bring some of the characters maybe into Frosthaven or start swapping characters around a little bit because at the very worst you've got some great great characters here to play with that are all really well designed and well tested so you know I'm very happy with that and just having miniatures for them all as well which is really really cool because I've got the miniature set so yeah I think that that's got roughly where I ended up with uh with Crimson Scales so I'm very, very, um, I'm very, very happy that I backed it and went through the print run with it. Uh, you know, it's been a great roller coaster ride reviewing all of the classes on the channel. It's been great, um, you know, meeting um, BG613, Motti at PAX Unplugged and getting to chat to him about the whole thing and about what he went through. And it's, a, it's just a really amazing kind of project, really. And um, my hat goes off to him and to everybody else who collaborated on the project, really. And if you manage to get yourself, you know, this very uh probably you know collector's piece uh in the future i would think you know I, I don't know if they'll do another print run but you know this is this could potentially be a nice little kind of gloomhaven fan collector's item anyway for a lot of people um, for, for years to come so yeah that's what i kind of generally thought about crimson scales let me know what you guys think about it down below in the comments don't forget to like and subscribe because it really really helps me out on the channel and i appreciate it very much very very much also, don't forget to come over to twitch.tv slash mandatoryquest where I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Sunday. But I will be increasing that number of streams to do Frosthaven as well. So just keep an eye out on the Twitch channel. I'll be releasing my new schedule, which will have all the Frosthaven stuff on it soon as well. But apart from that, thank you all so much for watching. I will catch you in the next video. Bye. Well, I think so. Yeah. Oh, 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 o